The topic of tonight's lesson is a response to GMS, re the 12 tribes chart. And as you can see on the screen here, it says um, uh, the 12 tribes chart according to Ezekiel 37 verse, verses 15 to 28 versus the 12 tribes chart, which is the commonly used 12 tribes chart by um, all the Israelite camps. All right, and we're going to discuss it tonight. And why are we doing this tonight? Because there was a, a, a video that was brought to my attention. And this video was, um, was found on the channel of a brother, a GMS going to address it tonight all right um so with that said let's jump right into it the scripture says we should defend the gospel and that's what we're going to do tonight and for that lord we say all praises all honor and all glory to you in the name of your son yahweh and with that let everybody say so let it be all right so let it be now um <clears throat> I'm going to jump uh, right into it. So let it be. Yes, thank you so much, brother. So let it be. There is um, a scripture. And I'm going to read this scripture. Matthew 23, uh, verse uh, verse 31. Let's, let's read this scripture because it's very pertinent. It's very pertinent. Well, let's start from verse 30. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. And he's and say. And they say we had been they said if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers in them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. All right? And this is very, very pertinent because what I noticed recently in Israel that there is a lot of cut your throating that is going on, right? Israel is on the rampage to snuff out, to snuff out the spirit of the prophets. And it is really, um, in my view, not a prestigious thing to be a leader in Israel. It's not a prestigious thing, all right? And there are some people who have dubbed themselves leaders um, in prominent camps such as GMS and they act as though God gave them the, key to, the keys to heaven. Now the scripture says that you should not revile the leaders of your people and so I'm not here to revile or to be disrespectful to them because I have great respect for the apostles of Great Millstone. I'm not a member of GMS. I do not discourage people from joining their camps or anything like that. But I am saying, though, that the history of the leaders of Israel from back then, during the time of Christ, Yahweh Shai, and our time is the same. And what is that? They've killed the prophets. The leaders killed the prophets. In every instance, no heathen has ever killed any prophets of Israel. It has always been the leaders of Israel. They killed the prophets. 
And this is the reason why Yahweh says here, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself that you are the children of them that killed the prophet. Right? And, and Yahweh went on to say, fill ye up the measures of your fathers. Because that's exactly, remember, they were getting ready to kill him. So he says, fill up the measures of your fathers. And this is what is happening today in Israel. All right? No, there are some. So, you know, what, what happened back then? And I'm just going to give you a quick uh, synopsis of what happened back then. Is that the leaders of Israel, they would have officers. And they would have regents. And what they would do is that they would send their officers. The regents would send their officers to find the prophets and threaten them. And of course, you know, the prophets are going to still speak the word that came to them from the Lord. And these regents would send their officers to kill the prophets. Or they would bring them in and torture them themselves and then kill them. Why? Because the prophets do not say the things that they tell them that they should say. And we have that today. And this is our experience here on this channel. And we're going to prove it tonight. That this is what's happening. Because we did present our 12 tri tribes chart. And from the inception of our channel here on YouTube. And by the way, we have been teaching lessons long before we came on, onto YouTube. We have hundreds of lessons on our hard drive that we have not yet uploaded to, to YouTube. But because they saw that our channel is new on YouTube, they refer to us as Johnny Come Lately. And you know that there were some leaders with Israel when Israel came out of Egypt. There were leaders. The 12 tribes had leaders. We can read it in the Exodus, right? Moses said, Moses said give us 70 men that are leaders amongst the tribes, right? So they were leaders. And those leaders came out of Egypt with us. But the scripture says, not one of them made it into the promised land. Not one. It was their children that were born in the wilderness that made it. And of all the people that came out of Egypt, only two made it into the promised land. And that's Caleb and Joshua. And even Moses himself, the head leader, did not make it. And the scripture says that those things were written for us as an example. And I just want to remind the leaders of Israel of those things. And I want to remind the leaders of Israel especially GMS, that not because you came from one West and not because you were with Abba Bivins and High Priest Yaqua and the rest of them, it doesn't mean you're going to make it into the promised land. Because you might not make it because of your unbelief. And because of the wickedness that you've done. To those who are born in the wilderness. Don't forget that it is those who were born in the wilderness that made it. Those who you refer to as Johnny come lately. They made it. And the scripture said that the Lord. Caused you. To walk. 40 years in the wilderness until you were consumed. Those of us who are waking up now. And those of us in whom the Lord put the spirit to teach. We are your sons that are born in the wilderness. And take heed that you don't make it. It is a very evil thing. 
to circle the wagon around new teachers, who by the way are not teaching anything wrong, they're just teaching it differently from you. And what you say is, if you don't say exactly what Abba Bivins taught us, and if you don't teach exactly the way it came out of One West, you are a reprobate. And you're an agent, and you're a bug out. And you should be discarded. This is what is happening now. And I have gone on these channels because I have respect for the elders. And I still listen to them. And I still learn from the elders. But I noticed, though, that especially GMS is on the campaign to kill. There are hardly, hardly any lessons coming out of, out of GMS anymore. Because they comb the YouTube, looking for somebody to make them an offender of a word. Or if they ever misspoke. Or if they ever say anything differently from the way you say it. All right? And they target you. They target those people and they put them in the pit to let them die. All right? And they are on the attack against our channel because we have asked questions that they refuse to answer. GMS refused to answer the questions that we have asked them. Apostle Tahar refused to answer the question, and I'm not being disrespectful. I'm saying that Apostle Tahar refused to answer the questions. And Apostle Ramda refused to answer the questions. I have made attempts, many attempts, on these brothers' channel to ask them question, questions and to have dialogue, and they blocked me, and they um, deleted me, I've even sent my phone number to certain brothers and they ignore me. And yet they come out against me. And tonight we're going to prove that our 12 tribes chart is accurate. And you know, family, I have never really went against the 12 tribes chart of uh, I've never gone against this 12 tribes chart of the, which is the generic 12 tribes chart used by, used by um, these other camps. I've never gone against it because it has always been, it has always been my attitude that this chart, which you can see here on the right side of the screen, it has always been my attitude that the chart is not geographically accurate, but I never made it be a problem and I've never gone out against it, right? I've always said that I believe the chart serves this purpose because of many of us that are awake to the fact that we are Israel were awakened because of this chart, because of their chart, because of this chart here on the right of your screen. Many of us were awakened because of this chart. And I believe that this chart serves this purpose. Am I condemning this chart? No, I've never done so. But I don't think it is geographically accurate. I don't even think it is scripturally accurate. And I'm going to prove it tonight that it's not scripturally accurate. But Ezekiel 37 says, make two sticks and ride upon them for the house of Israel and his companion and another stick for Judah and his companion. And it never said that you should try to figure out who those individuals are. And it never said that you should try to figure out which, um, which country they live in. 
because you can't in the last days because Israel is scattered. And this is why our chart is the way our chart is. All right, now um, that's one thing. The next thing is that there cannot be a single uh, cookie cutter chart because it cannot apply to the whole world. You have no one chart that can apply to the whole world. You know why? Because Israel is scattered into all nations. So you cannot say to anyone that you cannot make a chart that's not like the one we have. Because your chart does not apply to Africa. In fact, this 12 chart, tribe chart does not recognize that there's any Israelites in Africa. Look at this 12 tribes chart for me. Look at it. And all you in um, YouTube land, and all you followers of GMS, and all the other camps that uses this, and I'm not saying don't use it, I'm just saying you cannot kill the prophets who have another version of the chart. So if you look at this chart, it does not recognize that there's anybody in Africa. So can you tell me how you're going to wake up the people in Africa with this? You think you can take this, this chart and go to uh, the Gambia and teach them that uh, Judah is in, is in uh, that Levi is in Haiti? It doesn't apply to them. And it's one of the reasons why the people who are of the Northern Kingdom in Africa are not waking up. And what, and what Satan is doing is snuffing out the prophets that are hailing our brethren in Africa to wake up. That's what this guy of James is doing. And we're going to go ahead right now and, um, and I'm going to roll the clip. Sorry for the long monologue family, but I'm going to go ahead and roll the clip. And we're going to go through this thing step by step. And we're going to apply some, some scriptures to their, to their chart. I'm going to apply some scriptures to our chart. And we're going to see. Uh, this is it. Okay. So this is the brother, or is GMS Watchmen. GMS Watchmen. This is his channel. And he did this video um, about our channel and, um, and our 12 tribes chart. And this video is entitled Addressing a Guy Called Judah the Hebrew. And then he said, Beware, beware. Okay. And this brother, um, GMS Watchman, he, um, he has called me out of my name, which, by the way, when you do that, you're giving a byword to somebody. And he has called me a reprobate, even though this guy has not known me. He doesn't know me. And I don't know him. And he said in his video that this is the first time he's even hearing about me. Well, he can call me a reprobate. So let's see what's going on. We're going to roll this video. And we're going to talk about his family. And I don't want to be too long. Maybe the next half hour we'll, we'll finish and shut it down. Okay. All right. So here we go. This is him. Watch JMS Watchman. Or dash broke a thumb to the 144,000 servants as well as the remaining elect of Israel. So this channel was brought to our attention. Um, from the beloved elder Manat Zakbar in one of our chats. Uh, All right. Um, so he just said that my channel was brought to his attention by Brother Manat Zakbar. Brother Manat Zakbar brought my channel to his attention in one of their chats. That's what he just said. Now, remember, I said that what Israel would do in the past, Israel would, um, their regents would uh, find a prophet and then they would send the officer. They would send the officer, the mercenary. They would send the murderer to go kill him. This is how it happened. We can read Jeremiah 38. This is what they did to Jeremiah. They sent and got Jeremiah and put him in a pit where there was no water. And it was full of doo-doo. 
All right? This is, what, this is what they do. They send somebody to get you and put you in the pit. So, so this Manata Zatba shared my channel to his, to his mercenary, to his murderer. And he said, I want you to kill this one. And this is him trying to kill us, trying to kill me. All right. Now, let me show you who this um, Manata Zatba is. All right. And this is a guy that is, that is known. All right now, um, let me make sure I'm sharing his face so you can see him. This guy. This is Manata Zatba of South Carolina. And he is one of the regents, one of the elders, but he's a regent. All right, because the leaders and the kings are Tahar and uh, Ramlab and, and those guys, right? And this guy is a lesser leader. And his job is to find the, 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 the prophets and kill them. And so he sent my information to James Watchman, who is his murderer. And this guy is known in the Israelite world, this Manata Zappa. Is known in the Israelite world for that, to the point where he has been labeled this. And some, I didn't make this up, somebody made this of him. Somebody made this to depict his vicious ways. Because he's like the terminator. They call him the rebukinator of GMS. <laughs> And this is a gentleman that JMS Watchman just said, sent him my channel, right? So, so JMS Watchman is the murderer. And this is the regent that sent him. This is what all Israel have done from the very beginning until this day. They killed the prophets. And this is how it's done. This is how it's been done now in modern times. All right, so let's go back to um, let's go back to the video. All right. So we hear he, he just said that Manata Zappar sent my, my channel to him. Let's keep um, going. Concerning this individual that goes by the channel, Judah the Hebrew. Okay, and as you can see, he's got this funky, hogged out. 12 tribe chart that I want to address briefly because um, it's inaccurate and it's contrary to what we've learned from the apostles of Great Millstone and their elders. Okay, their elders going back to, um, well, let's start with Abba Bivens, some call him Abba Bivens, <clears throat> which we believe to be. Um, Elijah the prophet in the reincarnation we, we believe that that's our faith you know according to the Holy Spirit pursuant to um, Malachi 4 and verse 5 which taught the likes of King Marsha High Priest Arya High Priest Yaiqab High Priest Shah and the rest of the men that um, the Apostles of Great Millstone learned under okay in which i haven't met you know the likes of you know of course Abba Bibbins, king marshall high priest aria high priest yaikob or high priest shah for that matter yet and still i believe the report of the apostles of great millstone okay and what um they've taught us concerning the things that they were taught such as the breakdown of the 12 tribes of israel all right so he just said that um that my chart is go is contrary to the chart that they've gotten from their elders um high priest yaquab high priest high priest aria and high priest shah he says my chart is contrary to their chart 
And again, this speaks to what I'm saying that, and that is that if you don't say the things that the leaders of Israel want to hear, or, um, or, or repeat the things that they tell you to say, you are in danger of the regent sending his murderer to kill you. And it doesn't necessarily mean that what you said is wrong. It just means you don't say the same exact thing they say. And so when that is the case, there is no latitude for the Holy Spirit to work. So everybody in Israel can only have a chart, which is a copy of the chart that was given to them out of one way. And you cannot use your brain to analyze that chart or to come up with any new chart that does not reflect their chart. Otherwise, you're in trouble. It doesn't necessarily mean that your chart is wrong. And we're going to prove tonight that my chart is not wrong. And we're going to, and we're going to prove that there are flaws in their chart that they refuse to fix. All right, we're going to do it scripturally. So let's continue. Which I believe that was, um, you know, given unto um, High Priest Ariel through the Holy Spirit. So he says that their 12 tribes chart was given to them by, through the Spirit, was given to High, high Priest Ariel. Right? And, and he's saying that all, other, all charts must be that chart. There can be no other chart but that one. Spirit. Okay, I'm going to skip forward. That's my belief. That's my faith. And so when I see um, characters like this, Judah, the Hebrew, uh, going going against what I've learned, what I've been taught, you know, by the apostles. It raises a red flag, as it should raise a red flag to the rest of you brothers and sisters, okay, that come from, um, I'll say, the school of one West. All right, so he just said that it, um, if you see anyone with, with a chart that is not the, that is not the chart of uh, One West, that is contrary to One West, it should raise a red flag if you see any other chart, all right? So you can only have a chart, you can only have the chart that comes from One West. That's what he's saying, right? Okay. Watch his false prophets like this individual here, this character here, Judah, the Hebrew. All right, so he has labeled me um, a character and a, a false prophet because I'm teaching contrary to the doctrine that they received from One West. That's what he's saying, okay? And judging through the spirit. Now he says, judging me from the spirit, is what he's going to do now. He's going to judge me by the Spirit. Okay? And let's hear how he judges me. And by the way, he's judging me for something that I've done that is not wrong. And we're going to prove it tonight. So I'm declaring here right now that his judgment is false. You're going to hear what he's going to say about me. And now if what he said about me was true, then his judgment would be just. But if it turns out that the things that he's saying about me is false, then it's an unjust judgment. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. You know, I believe this individual to be either um, a reprobate. All right. So he's saying I'm a reprobate. A reprobate. Okay. Through the spirit, he's judging me as a reprobate. All right, let's continue. Okay. Because it speaks about, um, you know, certain individuals that are wise in their own conceit. When you go to the book of Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs, the 26th chapter. It speaks about, you know, certain people that are wise in their own conceit. Fool 
under that category or he could be an agent of sort okay an agent set up to bring confusion so that's what i said right they they demonize you you are a reprobate or you're an agent or you're a bug out all right or you are a stumbling block to israel these are the uh these these are the 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 this this is the way in which they judge people. All right, so let's listen. You know, amongst um the truth. Or he could just be an example of the parable written in John ten. All right. Or I'm a I'm I'm an example of a thief. That's what he's saying. Because the parable in John 10 is talking about uh, people that, that come in through the, the other door or through the window and not the not the, the, um, the open door, right? So, I'm a thief. Um, what did our Lord say? Yahweh Shai said, um, he that doesn't enter in at the door or tries to climb up some other way, the same as a robber and a thief. Okay, and I believe that's what the case is here with this individual. You know, you've got a lot of Israelites out there that wake up to the truth. However, they refuse to come under the tutelage of, let's say, a One West Hebrew Israelite camp. See, that's what I'm telling you. This is exactly what the elders did back in Israel. If you do not come up through the ranks of the Pharisees, and if you don't say exactly what they tell you to say, you're going to end up like Jeremiah because their regents are going to send a mercenary like this murderer to come find you and to kill you. And this is exactly what he's doing. If you don't teach what we tell you, and if you don't repeat it, and if you don't repeat it exactly the way we tell you, and remember, the Holy Ghost cannot bring you any new understanding it's impossible because all new understanding must come through the tutelage of them from one west and such the like it must come through the leaders that brought us out of Egypt and those of us who are born in the wilderness from these men cannot have any other understanding Right? And that was the very mistake that our leaders made when we first came out of Egypt. They would not listen. And so they were all consumed. And it was their children who were born in the wilderness that entered the promised land. All right. Now, um, enough of him demonizing me. Let's go to the doctrine because he's saying that this, this our chart is inaccurate. So I'm just going to move forward into, into um, his video. I'm not going to listen to any more of him vilifying me. Right? Let's go to, uh, I think it's about the eight minute and about here. Let's go here and let's see, let's see what he says is doctrinally wrong with the chart. Because family, that's the most important thing. Not what I feel and not what he feels about me, but the doctrine. Let's see what he says is wrong with the chart. And let's see if that is true of what he said is wrong with the chart. Okay? Here we go. For the sake of the hopeful elect of Israel out there. Learning. Now, as it pertains to this chart, this 12 tribe chart, um, the first red flag that, you know, comes to my mind is the fact that um, his breakdown does not include Genesis 49 or Deuteronomy 33 or even 2nd Ezra's the 13th chapter around the 40th verse in which is key in understanding the kingdom of Israel or as we called it the northern kingdom all right, so he just said, 
that was what's doctrinally wrong with my chart that I do not use uh, Genesis 49. And he said, I didn't use Deuteronomy 33. And I, and I did not use uh, Second Ezra chapter 13 um, from about the 43rd verse, right? He says, I never used it. <clears throat> now, my um, response to this brother is that the scripture says that you should hear a matter before you answer it. Because you're a fool if you answer a matter before you hear it. And so what he has done is that he's vilifying my chart and he's lying by saying that I did not use 2nd Ezra 13. Right? And as to Deuteronomy uh, 33, it's a foregone conclusion. And Genesis 49. Now, we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about those. But he just said, I don't, I did not use those to establish my chart, right? Now, bear that in mind because we're going to go to, to my chart. We're going to go to my video on the 12 tribes chart and see if what he said is true. All right, but let's continue. And dare I say... You have to even go into. And by the way, you know what? I'm 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 just going to go against my own flow right here. I'm going to go to um, my video on the twelve tribes chart, and I'm going to go to. Um, so if you if you um, remember this right now, what we've done is that we've done a series on Africa. We started out with our series um, from Israel to Africa. And then we did, and by the way, Israel to Africa is the northern kingdom, from the northern kingdom to Africa. How did the northern kingdom get to Africa? That was our, that was our um, video. Then we did another video that says from Jerusalem to Africa. And what was that about? It was about the southern kingdom of, of, of uh, Judah when it was sacked in AD 70 that we fled into West Africa. And the first video from Israel to Africa was talking about the northern kingdom, the 10 tribes that were taken into Assyrian captivity, and how that at the end of the Assyrian Babylonian war that the 12 tribes could not be found. Why? Because the 10 tribes left Assyria, went back over the Euphrates, and went into sub-Sahara Africa, and we said it was fulfilling the scripture, the second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 41. The same scripture that he said, we never used to build our chart. Now this here on your screen, this here on your screen is, um, is the thumbnail of the video that I'm talking about. And you can see where, where, where it says sub-Saharan Africa are the last 10 tribes. And you can see second Ezra 13 and verse 41. So now when we're building our chart, that, that these people in Africa are Israelites. It came from 2nd Ezra 13, 41 of the previous video. I'm saying that in our video, in, in our series from Israel to Africa, we proved that the Northern Kingdom of Israel left the Assyrian captivity and went into a land where never mankind dwelt. We use that scripture, by the way, was very prominent in that video to prove that the people of sub-Sahara Africa are of the northern kingdom of Israel. And here again in this video, the native sub-Saharan African are of the lost tribe of Israel. You can see on your screen, this is the thumbnail. If you go to our channel and you look up this video, you will see this is the thumbnail of that video. And you can see 2nd Esdras 1341 is bold and features prominently in this video. Yet he just said that I never use Second Ezra 13 to establish my chart. So who is lying? This is one though, by the way, family. Here's, a, here's another one. Here's my next video in the series of Africa. And in this next video, you can see on the thumbnail, if you go to our channel, you will see in big bold 
2 Ezra 13, 46, where it says, Then dwelt there they until the latter time, and now they shall begin to come. This is the same 2 Ezra 13 from verse 40 that he said, I never used it to establish my church. So I'm saying to James Watchman, don't answer until you've heard the matter. Don't answer until you've heard because it makes you a liar. You who are calling me a rep reprobate and judging me wrongfully is breaking the law because you are, you are judging me when you're not supposed to judge me wrongfully. The, the, the law says judge righteously. And that's already a wrongful judgment. And you are and you are bearing false witness against me. So you're also a liar. Right? And you're a fool according to the scriptures, because it says only a fool answers a matter before he hears it. You should have gone ahead and listened to my series on Africa. So that we establish that the people of Sub Saharan Africa is Israel. Using second address that you said we didn't use. All right. Now here's another video where we talk about the Israel, the Bantu, the Igbo, and the E1B1 genetics. Where we prove that all these people here, according to the research, go and listen to that video and, and watch it. Manata Zatba. The, the rebukinator, right? The, the, the regent, murderer. Go listen to it. Before you come up here and, and, and try to snuff out the spirit of the prophets that are not lying or, or, to, or, or, or um, teaching any false doctrine. Before you murder another prophet. Go and listen to my video. All right, and I'm constraining myself tonight, you know, because I, there are some choice words that I'd like to use. Me being Jamaican. Okay, all right. Now, let's go back to, uh, to, to his video. I'm going to do maybe two more minutes of his video, and then I'm going to go right into um, proving this thing, okay? All right, so where's his video? I think this is it. All right. Let's go. Um, Revelation chapter 7 to an extent. Okay, and the reason I say that is because I... All right, if you didn't hear that, he's saying that my um, that scripturally I also never used Revelation chapter 7. He said that I did not use it. All right, so um, let's, let's hear what he said. As you can see on the left, you see um, the tribe of Dan. Okay, and... According to Revelation 7, you know, our Lord isn't dealing with the tribe of Dan. They're not mentioned. And, um, you know, we can speculate all day long concerning what happened unto Dan and things of that nature. But nonetheless, pertaining to salvation and who our Lord is gathering, the Lord, you know, is excluding the tribe of Dan. All right, so this brother just said that when you go to, he says that my chart is not accurate because I have included Dan. So, so um, this is what he's talking about, right? Let me go back up to it. This is my twelve tribes chart here, and on the um, left here, you see that we have included um, Dan, the tribe of Dan, and he is saying that in Revelation seven, the tribe of Dan is not mentioned. Therefore, the Lord is not dealing with the tribe of Dan. He just said that the tribe of Dan is not saved. Why is he saying that? Because Dan was not um, mentioned in Revelation 7, you know, the ceiling of the 144,000. Dan was not mentioned. So he said, I'm going off. Right? No. Um, let me just address that real quick. The reason why Dan was not mentioned was that Ephraim and, and Joseph was mentioned. 
and sorry, not not Ephraim. Manasseh. If you go back to Revelation seven, you will see that Manasseh and Joseph were mentioned. But remember that Manasseh is Joseph's son. And in scriptures, Manasseh and Joseph are used interchangeably. So Joseph really was used in Revelation 7 for Ephraim. So why wasn't Dan mentioned? And he said, oh, you can go out and, and, and speculate as much as you want concerning Dan. But Dan is not safe. That's what he just said. You can speculate as much as you want. And then he will, and then he goes on to talk about the mysteries of God. Is that the the the, the um the lost uh, tribe of Dan is a mystery of the Lord? That's what he just said. But in Romans eleven, Paul says, "All Israel shall be saved," as it is written, "All Israel shall be saved." So why is Dan not mentioned? Because Manasseh and Joseph were mentioned. And the half tribe of, of Manasseh encapsulates John, uh, um, Dan. I repeat, the half tribe of Manasseh encapsulates Dan. Now, if you go back to the inheritance of how the lands were, 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 um, were divided, Dan really never got no, 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 um, no inheritance. Dan had to go forage their own. And you will see that the half tribe of Manasseh on this side of the Jordan and Dan had the same suburbs. And because of the nature of the tribe of Dan, that tribe was encapsulated by Manasseh by the half-tribe of Manasseh. And on the opposite side of the Jordan, the other half-side of Manasseh was with Gad. Because of the nature of those two tribes. But all Israel is saved. There's no end to the tribe of Dan. In fact, since I'm on this, let me get the scripture. Let's get a scripture because I don't want him to say all I did was talk and I didn't and I didn't pr produce any scriptures. Let's let's um let's get some scriptures, okay? So let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter uh, four, and the, the scripture says there is no end of all the people, right? Even of all that have been before them. They also shall come, they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Because all this is vanity and vexation of spirit. There is no end to the people before or them that come after. There's no people that is extinct. And the scripture says, all Israel shall be saved. There's no loss. Hey, this, this guy is teaching. That there's no salvation for the tribe of Dan. Who is the reprobate? Who is the reprobate? Now we we added Dan because we know that Dan is saved, and we know that Dan is with Manasseh. So if you notice. That on our track on, on our chart, you don't see Manasseh. And that's because that, and that's because we, we understand and we know the scriptures. That's why we don't have Manasseh, but we have Dan. But we can interchange Dan with Manasseh. And one of the reasons why Man why Dan was not given a lot of prominence in, in the scriptures, you know, you know, you know that Dan. That Dan is the first tribe that went and took the idol, the idol of Micah, and kept it, and made uh, and made the son, and made the the children of the son of Moses. They made they made them priests over the idol of Micah, and that's why they were not given prominence. 
the tribe of Dan. You can read it in Judges, the 18th chapter. Go read it. Go read it, JMS Watchman, Amanata Zappa. Go read it. But Dan is not lost. And for you to teach that the whole tribe of the children of Israel are lost is, I can't believe that's what you teach. But I'm the reprobate. All right. Um, let me see what's in the chat and I'll come right back. So somebody says, this man is very wicked. Thank you so much, Aquia. My dear beloved sister. Um, somebody says, your 12th grade chart is the only chart that aligns with the scripture. All praises to the Heavenly Father. How are you a reprobate when you base everything that you teach upon scripture? That's my point. And I'm going to teach, show you something else about, about um, I'm going to show you something else about uh, Genesis 49 that he's talking about. All right. Thank you so much. Um, Takaya says, he just brought more attention to your channel. All praises. Thank you. We, yes. We need hate, <laughs> haters. We need haters to be great. All right. Because, yeah, you know, that's the way the world runs today, right? If somebody hates you, you get recognition. All right. Thank you so much. Awesome. All praises. All right, now let's continue. Um, so, so already he's saying that we never we 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 are um that we are featuring Dan on our twelve tribe chart because he doesn't believe that Dan exists exists, but Dan does exist, right? Dan is part of the Northern Kingdom, and if you notice their twelve tribe chart, they don't have Dan there. So, so, so they are saying that Dan is lost, contrary to the promises that God made to Abraham. To Isaac and to Jacob and his seed after him. But one of one of Abraham's seed is lost. Right? You believe that? Right, but that's what he's teaching. And he's saying that my chart is wrong. All right. Um, let's let's uh listen to a little bit more of what he's saying, and then I'm gonna stop because I have to um go into the scriptures to prove that our chart is accurate, family. Okay. Okay. And again, that's according to Revelation 7. And that's something that we need to be content about. You know, there's certain mysteries and secrets of our Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shai, that are going to remain secret and mm. mysterious until the kingdom of heaven. All right, so this demon, I'm sorry. I said I wouldn't cuss. But this guy, he, he's saying, um, GMS Watchmen, and, and I'm sure that he must be representing all of GMS, that the tribe of Dan is lost, and it's a mystery of God. It's a mystery of the Heavenly Father that we'll not know until eternity or until the kingdom comes. This is what he's teaching, right? No, that is contrary to Scripture. And another Scripture just came to my mind. Uh... And I got to read it, family. I'm following the Holy Spirit tonight. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Israel shall be saved. There's no Israelite tribe that is lost. Brother, you see that scripture? Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or confronted. World without end. The 12 tribes of Israel have not gone anywhere. In fact, Jeremiah, 30, <laughs> Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, which giveth the sun by day, the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon, and this body is the, the Yarak. This is not the Hodesh, the Yarak, the moon in the sky. Okay? And of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the, when the waves roar. Yahweh opposes his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, watchman, for Jemis, Amanata Zabba, the rebukinator, if those ordinances depart from me, Said Yahweh, then shall the seed of Israel also cease from being a nation forever. Don't you see the sun today? 
They have no tribe, Dan, that is lost. So who is reprobate? You mercenary, you murderer of the prophets. So our 12 tribes chart that includes Dan is accurate. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. And we understand how Dan interchanged with the half tribe of Manasseh. Okay? All right, let's finish him up. Let's just finish up this guy. Let's just finish up this guy. And then we're going to go to, okay. um, then we're, going, we're going to go to, um, uh, Genesis 49. I'm going to show you something about Genesis 49. I think, um, let's talk quickly about uh, Genesis 49 that he's talking about, right? Now, <clears throat> let's do this. Let's get back to their 12 tribes chart. Because he said that it is crucial to use um, Genesis 49 when you are developing a chart. So, so this is their chart, all right? And let's see if they follow Genesis 49. We're gonna go to Genesis 49. Genesis 49, now in Genesis 49, this is Jacob. And he called all his sons. He said, and Jacob called unto him his sons and said, gather yourself together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Now, now remember now, he said that this is what you, you need to use to develop your chart, right? And he also said that um, that high priest Yaquab and, and high priest Arya got this chart that they have from Yahweh. All right, now, am I, am I going to say no? But let's watch. Now it says, now he's telling them what's going to happen to them in the last days. And he said concerning Simeon and Levi. He says, Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty, and are in their habitation, right? So um, this is Jacob talking about Simeon and Levi. Now, why did he say this about Simeon and Levi? Because it was Simeon and Levi. Sorry, it was Simeon and Levi that wiped out the sons of Sychar who raped Dinah, their sister. Right? And this is Jacob talking to them and he's telling them what's going to befall them. Now, this is what they, they say you should use to establish a 12 tribe chart Genesis 49. Now, this is him talking about Simeon and Levi. And he says, oh, my soul, come not thou into their secrets. You know, J Jacob is lamenting. And he just went on and he says, for in their anger, this woman. And in their self-will, they are digged down a wall. What they did was that they invaded and destroyed the sons of Sychar. That's what he's talking about. Now, verse 47, he's still talking about Simeon and Levi. And he says in verse 47, Curse be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. Watch this. And he said, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Then he went on to talk about Judah, and then he went on to talk about the rest, right? So this is what he said concerning Simeon and Levi, that they will be scattered amongst Israel, okay? Now, if you're using Genesis 49 to establish your 12 tribes chart, let me show you your 12 tribes chart. This is it here. And they say that Levi is the Haitians. Now, according to Genesis 49, the Levites are supposed to be scattered amongst Israel. So how come you have a chart that is telling us that all the Levites are, are in Haiti? 
in the last days. When Jacob said that in the last days, Levi will be scattered amongst all Israel. And where will Israel be in the last days? Scattered amongst all the heathens. So you try, you're trying to tell me that you who are using the, the Genesis 49. You who are using Genesis 49 are telling us that the Levites are in Haiti. And Simeon is in Dominica. That's what you're telling us. But that's not what Jacob said. Jacob said that they're going to be scattered in the last days amongst all Israel. And in their torture chart, <coughs> excuse me, they said that Judah is the Negro. And they said mostly that the people who in, in, in North America, the, the African American, is, is Judah. And they identify Levi as Haiti. So they are saying that there are no Levites in North America. See, the Levites are not scattered amongst them, according to this chart. Right? Which is false. And they're saying that Simeon is in Dominica, which is false. Because according to Genesis 49, Simeon and Levi is scattered amongst all Israel. And all Israel is scattered throughout the whole world. So you cannot find any island that you claim that all the Levites are. Okay? Next thing, next thing, family, about this 12 tribes chart, which for years I've never gone up against this 12 tribes chart. But since they're doing this, let's talk about it. Let's go to um, this here map. And by the way, this is a map that they all agree to. All Israel agree to this. This is, the, this is a depiction of the transatlantic slave trade. I want you to pay attention, family, pay attention. This is a depiction of the transatlantic slave trade. And all the Israelites that are teaching believe this. All right, this is, you shall go into Egypt again with ships. Okay, this is it. Now, this is West Africa, where they say Judah came from. This is West Africa, where they say Judah came from. And as you can see these ships, you see these lines? These are the root of these slave ships. Bring in Judah. You see right here? That's South America. This is South America. Where the ships are bringing Judah, Judah from Angola. And Judah from the Congo. And Judah from the slave coast. And they're taking them to Brazil. Right? And they're taking them to, uh, to uh, Panama. And they're taking them all the, into all these places. It says 5 million went to Brazil. 5 million of Judah went to Brazil. The, the ships go around. They go, go to the canal right here. And they took 0.5 million to Lima, Peru. Right? This is all Judah. South America. And all of these Israelites believe this. But they claim that Judah is in North America, the African Americans. Right? That's what they say on their chart. Let's look. Let's look at their chart. Right? Um, <clears throat> sorry, let's let's look at their chart here. Sorry, here. Let's look at their chart. Let's go back up to their chart. This is their chart. And they say Zebulun is in Guatemala. Now remember, Zebulun is a northern kingdom. See Zebulun here on the uh, uh, this is Zebulun. It's a northern kingdom tribe. And they're saying that Zebulun is in Guatemala and Panama. That's South America. But we just saw where the ships bring Judah there. And this, and they never account for all these five million Judas that went to Brazil. So on their chart, they're saying there ain't no Judah in Brazil. If they, they, even though there's no evidence that any northern kingdom is in Brazil. 
They say that Ephraim, the tribe of Joseph, Ephraim is in Puerto Rico. And they are saying Manasseh is in Cuba. Northern Kingdom, they are saying it's in Cuba. Now look. What a contradiction because they believe this, you know. So th these are the ships that went to Cuba. There they are. Right? This is where Jamaica and Cuba is. The West Indies right here. This is little Jamaica right there. So all these ships bringing, bringing Manasseh to Cuba. Or are these bringing Judah? Manasseh Zakba? And your murderer? You need to answer this question. These are the ships bringing the people to Jamaica and Cuba. And they're bringing Judah. But you claim in your 12 tribe chart, which you say is scriptural, you say that Cuba is Manasseh, Northern Kingdom. And you say the North American Indians are God. And you say Reuben is the Seminole Indians. And you say Naphtali is Argentina and Chile. That's South, Amer that's South America. Well, let's look at Argentina and Chile and see where these them ships coming from. This is Argentina and Chile down here. And you can see all them ships bringing 5 million people from Judah. There's not one North, Northern Kingdom person coming on these ships. Now, these are questions that you need to answer. And these are questions that I've never asked about your chart. Because like I said, I think it's a conversational piece. But if you're going to go up against our chart, which is designed for the people in the hemisphere and in the area of the earth that we are focused on, there's no way that we can bring this chart to them. You think I could go to Zimbabwe with this chart? You say that Asha, the, the tribe of Asha, is the Colombians and the Uruguayans. You know where Uruguay is? South America. Uruguay, let me go back to the map. Uruguay is down here. And all these ships are bringing Judah down there. And you don't account for any of Judah in South America. Yet your chart is accurate. It's scriptural. Now you show me where Genesis 49 claim that Asher is in Uruguay. In fact, the, the statistics say that most of the people taken out of West Africa were taken to South America. Most of them. So most of the people in South Africa, sorry, in not South Africa, in South America, most of the people in South America came from Judah. And the people in Jamaica are Judah. And the people in Haiti are Judah. Now, Judah is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But the thing is, you can't tell me that some one ship took the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Levi. Some ships pick out the Levites from amongst Judah and drop them off in Haiti. That's what you want to tell me? That makes sense? When these ships were bringing all these people. And remember, Judah is always scattered amongst all the, nation, all the nations of Israel. Sorry, um, Levi, sorry. Levi was scattered amongst all the nations of the house of Judah. So if these ships are bringing the house of Judah, not separating them by tribes to go pick out the Levites and drop them off at Haiti, your chart doesn't make any sense. And this history proves your chart to be questionable at best. And on your chart, on your chart, Elder Manata Zappa and your, your murderer, GMS Watchman, Watchman, on your chart, you claim that there are no Israelites in Africa. 
On your chart, you're claiming that there's no Israelites in Europe. If this is the only chart that we're allowed to use by the leaders of Israel today, you're saying that there is no Israelites in Europe, there's no Israelites in France, there's no Israelites in Italy, and there's no Israelites in Africa. That's what you're saying. And you're saying Northern Kingdom are in South America when you can see this ship bringing Judah to South America. And you make no call for the, for the Afro-American people in those South American country. You make no account for the Judites in those South American countries. But our chart does. This is why we say the Afro-Caribbeans from Cuba to Trinidad. Let me go to our, our um, thing so you can see it. Manata Zakba and your murderer trying to snuff out the life of the prophets. We say that Judah, the house of Judah, is the Caribbean islands from the Afro-Cubans to the Afro-Trinidadians. Why do we say it? Because you can see the ships bringing them there. There it is. That's why we say it. We say, we say, and this is another thing that he went up against. We say that the mixed descendants of the slaves worldwide, because we know that the house of Judah is captured worldwide. So we say, in addition to all these here, the mixed descendants of the slaves worldwide are of the house of Judah. And you know what he said? He said, I'm not identifying the tribe. He said, this is ambiguous. You, you know, in, in his video, he says that when I say this, it's ambiguous. Now, um, the GMS people, in referring to the mixed descendants of the slaves, they don't say the mixed descendants of the slaves worldwide. They don't say that. They say the Israelites that are amongst the heathen that look like the heathen. That's what they say. No, nothing is wrong with that because that is true. But we say the mixed descendants of the slaves worldwide. Now, what's the difference between what they say and what we say? Nothing. But yet he came against us saying the mixed descendants of the slave worldwide. And he said, that's ambiguous. I'm not identifying the tribes. Right? They used to say, in reference to the mixed descendants of the slave worldwide, GMS used to say the confusion of faces scattered worldwide. That's what they used to say. And when they found out how stupid that was, they changed it. And they start to say the Israelites that are amongst the heathens that look like the heathen. Well, that's what we're saying too. So what's wrong with what we say? Nothing. We just don't say it the way you say it. And for that, you want to kill us. Right? When your tribe, when your 12 tribe chart is lacking and it's not scriptural because all of the Levites are not on Haiti. The scripture says they're scattered to the four corners of the earth amongst the heathen. We also say, and lastly, family, and this is running long, but I have to go in on these people. Now, we also say that part of the kingdom of Judah is in sub-Sahara, West Africa. No, they agree. These Jewish people agree that Judah came out of West Africa. And we are saying that the residue of Judah that is left in, 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 um, West, in West Sub-Sahara Africa, we say here that they are part of Judah. We say right here, Sub-Sahara, West Africa, 
the native Igbo and Yoruba people from the Gambia to the Cameroon. No, you know, um, they know because I heard Banata Zakba in one of his lessons. He said that the Igbo people are Jews. And I've heard Apostle Tahar says this. The Igbo people are Jews. They even say that the word Igbo comes from Eber, which means Jew, which means um, uh, Hebrew. They say that. Then if you're saying that the Igbo people are Jews, then it must mean that you're saying that they are from the tribe or the house of Judah. And I am saying the same thing right here when I say Judah consists of the sub-Saharan West African Igbo people and Yoruba people. Now, we did our study in one of our lessons, go back and listen to it, where we prove that the Igbo people and the Yoruba people are the same people just speaking different languages. We did that research and we did a, a lesson before to prove it. We also proved in the research where it says that the Igbo people that came to Jamaica to work on plantation came from there. So the Jamaican people are Igbo. And if the Jamaican people are Igbo, then the Igbo people are Jews. And if the Igbo people are Jews, then they are of the house of Judah. That's what we said right here on our chart. And this demon is coming against it. Because they don't believe that the Holy Spirit can say the same thing in a different way with more emphasis. They don't believe that. You have to say what I appreciate um, uh, Yaquab said. And if you don't say what I, I priest Yaquab said, they're going to take you like Jeremiah and put you in the pit. And they're going to send their murderer, GMS, watchmen, to slander you and to call you reprobates. Nothing is wrong with our 12 job chart. It's just focus on the people in Africa. And every time you walk up to a GMS camp, let me go back to their chart. Every time you walk up to a GMS camp on the street and you ask them this question, you said, how come your chart doesn't reflect anybody in Africa when the scripture says Israel is scattered throughout the whole world? Why you don't, why you don't reflect the people in any other parts of the world? Why, you, why is it that your chart does not reflect the people in Europe? Like in our chart, we say, we say, we say, um, the Afro-Europeans. We say it right there on our chart. We say the Afro-Europeans. So we include them. And when you ask them, how come you don't include those people in Europe and, and in England and you don't include the people in Africa, like the Yoruba and the Igbo? You know what their answer is? They say, let the people in those areas create their own chart reflecting their own people. That's what they say. Which is what we do. Because we are here as Judah and we must wake up Ephraim. And if Ephraim is in West Africa, then we have to make a chart that reflects them. And that is what we do. And this demon is coming up against our chart. And, and, and are claiming that we are reprobates. And we're going off. And we're a stumbling block to Israel. But nothing on our chart is wrong, family. Nothing on our chart is wrong. We include the whole world. We talk about the mixed descendants of the slaves from the northern kingdom of Israel. You don't think that there are people from all these tribes mixed up amongst the world, the people of the world. But of course. So when we say the mixed descendants of the slaves worldwide, how are we wrong? And when we say that Judah is in is the Igbo people, Judah um, and the Yoruba people are Judah, 
How are we wrong? When you yourself said the Igbo people are Jews. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, well, I noticed on their um, map that they're showing the, no um, the Northern Kingdom in the Americas. And yeah. I don't know if you will have time to address how they would get to North yeah. America, to, to, to the Americas. Yeah, and thank you for that. And I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. I want uh, our family and YouTube family, I want you to watch this. I'm going to do it right now. And, I, you know, I never, ever plan to go up against the, these charts. You know, I just say, you know what, let's just leave them, let them preach. But since they are coming up against this, and this is important to wake up the Northern Kingdom. If we don't wake up the Northern Kingdom, we ain't coming out of here. And the people who they're claiming is Northern Kingdom, the, the Mongoloids of the, in, of, the, of the Native Americans, not one of them is awake yet. None of those tribes are awake that you're claiming is, is Israel. These people are the descendants of the Mongoloids. And that's why they're not waking up. And the people who we should be waking up, who should be focused on the mainland of Africa, Sub-Sahara, where the northern kingdom went to when they left Assyria to a place where never mankind dwelt. And by the way, that's what I wanted you to hear in my video. I may have, I may have jumped past it. The second is just 13 that he said we never used. It's in our 12 tribe charge video family. Go back and listen to it. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to go back. I, I think I went past it when I started um, because that's what I wanted to show you. But anyways, here, here's the question. Sister Sabaya said, um, show us what they say, how they say the Northern Kingdom came to the Americas. We're going to show you what they say the American, how the, the Northern Kingdom came to the Americas. Because they're claiming that the Northern Kingdom is in America, not in Africa. That's what they say. Right? And, they, and, they, and their proof for that is 2nd Ezra 13. The same thing that they're saying we never use. So let us look. Let us look and see what they say. All right? Now, let's, let's go to it. Let's go to it. 2nd Ezra. Let's just go to 2nd Ezra chapter 13. And we have it on deck here, actually. Verse 41. Verse 40. Let's start from verse 40. We have it on deck. We're going to use it. But they say we don't use it. It says, it says um, this is Ezra, and he see the, the kingdom of God. He, now, he saw the second coming of Christ, and he saw Christ gathering this peaceable multitude. And he's asking, who are these people? Right? So let's, start, let's pick it up from there. And the angel said, these are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, who Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And he carried them over the waters. And so they came into another land. So what, did, what happened? The Assyrians came and took the northern kingdom and took them to Assyria. That's what he's talking about. It is in your Bible. Okay. But they took counsel among themselves. Who took counsel among themselves? The ten tribes. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go into a further country where never mankind dwell. Now we say that that is sub-Sahara Africa. That's what we say here on our chart, on our teaching. So he's saying that we did not, we did not use 2 Ezra 13 to establish our chart. And we're saying, yes, we did. This scripture features prominently in our Africa series. So it says that they took counsel that they would go into a land where never mankind dwell. Now, scripturally speaking, Sub-Saharan Africa is a place where never mankind dwell. Because in all of the scripture, you don't see any nations in Sub-Saharan. There are none. Zero. And I challenged them, and they can't answer that yet. I said, show me where the scripture talks about nations. Show me where the scripture talks about Zimbabwe and Malawi and Mozambique. Because they never existed. Nobody lived there. Until the ten, the ten tribes went there. That's the land where never mankind dwell. All right? So it says that they took counsel among themselves that they would go into a place where never mankind dwell. Let's jump down to verse 43. And they entered into the Euphrates. They entered into what? The Euphrates, the river. By the narrow places of the river, for the most high then showed them signs and held still the flood. What did the Lord do? He stopped the Euphrates so they can go across. It says, till they were passed over. That means they crossed back over the Euphrates. Why? Because Salmanazar took them across it. 
how did we know that? It says right here in verse 38. It says, um, in verse 40, it says, and he, Salmanazar, cries them over the waters. What waters is that? The Euphrates. Okay, so now they're coming back over the Euphrates. It says, for through that country, there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and, and, the, and the same region is called Aseret. And we say that that's Sub-Saharan Africa. All right? Now, these camps say, no, 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 that's not Sub-Saharan sub, sub Africa. They say that's the United States. All right? So let us see. Let us see if that's true. Now, this is my famous Google Earth that I love to use. This is Google Earth. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show you what they say. So this here is about where the, the 12 tribes were in Assyrian captivity. Not the 12 tribes, the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom were here in Assyrian captivity, right about run about here, right? Because this this here is the Euphrates. This is the Euphrates. Okay? All right. So it says that Salmanazar took them over the waters and they were in this area right here. And he took them to Gozan and in the land of the Medes and so on. Okay? All right. So now they took counsel among themselves that they're going to go back over the river. That's what we just read. The Israelite camps say, no, no, no. They went in the river. And they say that they traveled along this river Euphrates, that's what they say, and they followed the Euphrates all the way, all the way, okay, this is what they say, to the Euphrates where it ends here in the Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, that's what they say. No, the 10 tribes of Israel, the 10 tribes are the larger portion of Israel, right? The larger portion of Israel. Two thirds of Israel is the ten tribes. Millions of people. So my first question is: How many ships did they have? These people who were in captivity. These people who, who were in captivity in Assyria. How many ships did they have to take the millions of people along? The, so can you imagine how many ships they have lined up here, going down through the river, right? And every ship of a captain. And they have foods and provisions on these ships to last a year and a half on this journey. This is what they want us to think. And you better not think anything else. All right. So they have all these ships. I don't know how many ships to take the 10 tribes. No, that's the larger portion of Israel, you know, family. And if you compare that, with the transatlantic slave trade that, that took 215 years to bring Judah over. An organized trafficking of people took 215 years to bring Judah, which is the smaller portion of Israel. You tell me how many ships these Israelites had when they took counsel among themselves that they're going to leave. How many ships did they have to bring all the 10 tribes of Israel? By tribes. And I don't know if they make trips back and forth. <laughs> right? And if they had one ship, even today they would start finish the journey. So I don't know how many ships, but I want you to see this. Let me show you why again that this is complete garbage. Let me show you why. All right, so now I'm going to take my ruler. Did you know you can measure this distance? This is the ruler, the measuring tape. This is it. All right. Let's see. If that's possible. So they were here in Assyria captivity, and this is the Euphrates, right? And they say they go into the river and took it all the way down here. So let's put a, a marker right here. Let's say they got into the river. He said that the narrow passages. So let's go to a narrow place, like right here. I'm gonna click that. That's gonna be the start. And we're gonna measure this distance. They went through this little this winding river, right? All the way down, they say, onto the Gulf of Mexico. Not Mexico, the Gulf of Persia. That already is 780 miles in the river. All these ships line up. 200 ships, which they never have. Where are going to get 200 ships from to carry 30 million people from all the tribes? And we're going to have foods 
food and provision for one year. You know how many food it takes to serve to, to, to um to feed three people for a year? And considering them coming out of slavery. And you're coming Activity. out of slavery. With you're nothing, running, I, with nothing, nothing, I suppose. Thank you, sister. You're running out of slavery with the shirt on your back. Yes. Trying to escape because why? Because the Assyrians and the Babylonians are at war and you're trying to sneak out while yes. they're fighting. While they're fighting. Where you get ships from? You took all the tribes of Israel and you carried them down to the port and load, load and, them and, on to 10,000. To how much ship? How many ships? And, and not to mention they're being attacked from the north. Yes. So why would they run to the north? Why would you run to the yeah, why yeah, why are you running to the south through the river? Because the Babylon here, you know. So you don't think this is Babylon right here. So Iraq is Babylon. And the Babylonians and the Assyrians are fighting. And you're going right past the Babylonians. <laughs> you know why the you know why the Babylonians are were, were trying to overthrow the Assyrians? To get the ten tribes. Right. Because the later normal, they were, the normal person and would go towards the south. <laughs> of course. That's towards South Africa, deeper in Africa. Don't you think you're going to run this way? Why would you run this way into the war in factions? Yes. But, any, but anyways, but anyways, like this, when you get to the Gulf and you empty out here in the Gulf, you are 780 miles from where you started in the, in the water. Now you're going to now be in the sea. All right. So we're, just, we're going to put a marker right here. I'm going to continue with the measuring. So now these people, I'm going to show you. Sorry. Oh, this is ridiculous. So now you have to travel here through the Persian Gulf. So let's say you go there, and you try to hug the coastline, and you go here, and you try to go, go to the coastline, and you get to here, and then you go around here, right? That's what they say when you ask them, right? And you go here, ask Pasuk Tahar, and see what he tells you. That's what he says. And then they go here, and they said that they hug the coastline, and the, and the currents carry them. All right? So you already are 1,800 miles. And I don't know how many ships you have taken all of, dry, of Israel. All right? And then you go in here. Now you're, now you're in the sea. Let's turn it so you can see it, family. Now you're here, and you, the measuring continues. And you go down to here. I'm going to push the map so you can see it. And then you go down to here and you're hugging the coastline for the currents. That's what they say. And you go to here. Now you're 4,200 miles when you get to here. 4,200 miles. All of y'all. Okay. And then you don't have Somebody got to be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> by, this, by this time, all the food's gone. Anyways, anyways, so you go through here. This is You go to Madagascar, between Madagascar, where the current is great. And you go here and you come to, they say they hug the coastline. That's what they say. Ask a pastor her and Ramlav, and they'll tell you they hug the coastline. They hug the coastline here. So we're hugging the coastline. All right? And then they go around Africa here. Now you're 7,000 miles. <laughs> and then they say you come up here and you follow the, the, the current, right? So now you're 8,000 miles. All right, let's pull the map so you can see it. Now you're on the opposite side of Africa. And you go along and you continue here and then you get to, I don't know where, let's say you go here. Now you're 10,000 miles in sea. All right, now, you, now you're going to have to pass this section of Africa. So you um, you go here, I'm oh, sorry. Then you go across the Atlantic. I don't know, God knows how. And you go to, you're going to drop off, you're going to drop off some of the Northern Kingdom people that they just told you on their map that is in South. America. You're dropping them off here. So you're dropping off Ishakar and you're drop, dropping off whoever else they say is down here, right? So let's say you go to here and you drop off some people. Now you're now you have already done 12,000 miles. And then and then you continue here because you have to go up to Haiti to drop off the Levites. Okay. Now whoever's watching this can have at least <laughs> have at least a second grade education, they should be able to see the truth. Right. And now, and so this is what they are telling us. This is how they're telling us that the Northern Kingdom fulfilled second is just 13. And this is the reason why the Northern Kingdom is over here in Latin Africa. That's what they're saying. All right. So I don't know. That, that makes sense. You tell me if you believe this nonsense. 
<laughs> this is your 14,000. You know how long it, hey, you, you they probably never been on the sea. Mm -hmm. You think you could be in boats for 14,000 miles on the sea? Oh, no. I'm hungry and, and, already. And those boats, and by the way, we're talking about, we're talking about 600 BC. Mm -hmm. Mm. Those are the those are the ships that they're telling us that are loaded with Israelites from the ten tribes mm -hmm. coming over to the Americas. And it took them what a year and a half. And it took them a year and a half. You're a year and a half with all of these Israelites in the sea. And I don't know how many mm. ships you have. And you're fourteen thousand miles, and you don't get to Cuba yet. And you're gonna have to come up here, and you're gonna have to go um to to drop off um is what is it what is it in is it Mexico is it car. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, but right. So, look, look. That's that's Mexico right here. That's Mexico right here. Yeah. All right. But you, but before you get to Mexico, you're gonna go to Jamaica and drop a Benji. <laughs> Benji. So no, yes. no remember yeah. Benji's Judah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're not dropping off Benji. Oh sorry. They're dropping off another kingdom. I'm sorry. Okay. So so they're going <laughs> over here to Mexico to drop off Issachar. And I don't know what after they drop up is a car, they probably um because they have to go here and go to Miami and drop it. This is Miami. So I don't know who they dropped off at Miami. The Seminole Indians. Okay. And then mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and whatever. Whatever the hell. You're trying to tell me <laughs> 20,000 miles. Give or take a thousand miles. Oh no, give or take two thousand miles. You 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 go on in 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 uh 80, sorry, in BC. 600, you have ships on which you took all the 10 tribes of, of Israel from Assyria, 17,000 miles on a 17,000 miles journey. Every tribe was his tribe. Yes. And drop them neatly, off in these, neatly, neatly in, their neatly tribes. in their tribes. And you bring them here? Mm -hmm. If you believe all... that, uh -huh. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, brother. And they all they all volunteered to go. Yeah. That's what they say? Yeah. Yeah, they took okay. a council among themselves. Yeah. Man, that's complete nonsense. Complete mm -hmm. garbage. Okay? No. Okay. And that is why I say I am not arguing their chart about accuracy. I'm I'm saying that the chart, the chart is instrumental for starting up the conversation as to who you are. Mm -hmm. But but don't tell me it's accurate. Don't tell me anything about um, Genesis 49. Don't tell me anything about Genesis 49 because your chart does not fulfill Genesis, Genesis 49. Because it, uh, uh, Levites, Levites cannot be in, a, in Haiti. Because the Levites just can't control all Israel. They don't have no land. They don't have no island mm -hmm. called Haiti. Complete garbage to start with, and and brilliant minds like Manata Zappa and this murderer. You can't see that yet. Uh, 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 listen, me make a quick comment as you use the word brilliant. Uh, it, I mean, I'm just dumbfounded to see that every all of the camps, every single one of them, use this chart. And just respectfully, I'm saying nobody with a little bit of intelligence can't look into it and say, um, this is nonsense. You can't, yeah. They can't Every <laughs> single camp use this chart. Yeah. That's what happens. Did I lose audio? Well, I mean, that's just like oh. for all these generations, we looked at the Bible and we didn't realize it was about us. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, you can have uh, you but, know, but I mean, you know, just but just common sense. When I woke up to this truth a couple of years ago and I saw this chart, the very I never ever believed in it. All right, and I'm just one person, and 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 nobody don't hold don't hold the um channel it make, it never against made, it. Never made a sense to me from day one, and still does not make any sense. And because, I'm not as and I'm, I'm not as brilliant as some of these people out there teaching. They never suffered any of the curses. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I never got it. Were the Indians um 
made captive and put on slave ships and brought to oh wait they say they were already in america my bad i forgot <laughs> yeah 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 and they say that, that uh you know that, 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 can that, i chime in real quick yes go ahead i just wanted to say you know um that i wanted to follow up with the um, with the miss i don't know her name but she was saying that you know the first time she saw that other 12 tribes chart she never believed in it and yeah. i never did either i was confused i wanted to believe because a few months ago that's when i started coming to the realization of who my true identity is that i'm a true israelite right so i was excited mm -hmm. but the chart never made sense to me right and and i would say the reason why it never made sense to us is because that is the Holy Spirit. That's the Ruach Kadesh. Right. That is the discernment. Right. When you us. have it, when you have it, you can separate BS from the that's church. right. So yeah. what what we have that these camps don't have is the Holy Spirit discerning what yeah. is true and what are lies. Yes. You know, and and like and now the more and more I come to realize my true identity the more I want to share it with the world, but the more I'm learning in depth and I believe the Holy Spirit, and I always say the Ruach HaKadosh because I like to say the Hebrew word, yeah. led me to Judah the Hebrew because yeah. when I watched your video about the 12 tribes chart like a few months ago, I was like, okay, I just knew the Holy Spirit just like, I, it's just, that makes it's, sense. yeah, so. Scripture. You can't, you can't argue with scripture. No. And you cannot argue with the Holy Spirit. That the, you know, Yeah. The, the, that, what you're saying, sister, the, the scripture says the spirit testifies with our spirit. Once it makes, when you hear it, you know. Once you hear it, you know. And if you hear it and you have doubts, yeah, if you hear it and you have doubts and you're confused and it doesn't quite make sense, it's because it doesn't make sense. That's right. It doesn't make sense. And the problem is that like what people are not doing is that when you when when you know something doesn't make sense, you know, you have to trust what God is I mean what Yah is saying inside of you, what the Holy Spirit is saying mm -hmm. inside of you. Uh -huh. And you always have to confirm with prayer and supplication. Confirm. Yeah. Nobody's doing that. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, if fifty percent of these camps actually said you know what let's verify this with scripture uh -huh. let's actually verify it they they would have come up with the same with what we are talking about uh -huh. with the truth yeah but but you know what i would even go a little further not even to say verify it with scripture just use your common sense does this make sense you know yeah. somebody has a dream and come up with something you don't try to even you know put a little thought in it <laughs> yeah so this is what they want us to believe and 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 this is what they will kill you for and i'm not saying literal kill i'm saying they they're spiritually trying to snuff out the life out of this ministry out of this mm -hmm. channel but because manata zappa sent he said sent my channel to his mercenary and he says i want you to go through it now, I'm imagining that this is what he says to him. He says, I want you to go through it, this time, and I want you to find reasons to destroy this guy. Well, he didn't go through it well enough. No. So. No, he never went through well enough, because when he said that we never use second address, that's what I was trying to find to play for you guys. But you can go back and listen to it, and you can see that we say that the people of sub-Saharan Africa went back over the Euphrates. That's what it says, that they went through a narrow passages across the river, and the Lord held for the flood that they could cross over. And what the people did, which make more sense, is that they, this is the Euphrates. Now, you check, check that versus this. Right? This is the Euphrates. This is where they were, and they went back over. And they traveled this way. Now, why didn't they go back into the land of Israel? Why? Because remember that when Salmanazar took them out, the scripture says that he brought men from Babylon and from Kutha and from Ava 
and the Sophara beams and place them in the land of Israel instead of the, the children of Israel. So you can't go back after 200 years. Remember, remember, they took them out, you know, and after 200 years, they passed back. So after 200 years, when the land is already filled with all these, these, uh, these Hamites and these Babylonians, you have no place. So the people went back and migrated past, and they followed the path that Abraham took in the beginning. And they went back across the land bridge here. And they followed the Nile. This is the Nile. And they followed the Nile into Sub-Sahara. Look, this is the Sahara. This is the Sahara. And they crossed the Nile. And this is the first border, if you can see it on your screen. And they went into Sub-Sahara. And they started to migrate along all of this area. See, this is the Sudan. Here it is. The, down here is the Congo. Right? And they migrated all the way. This is the South Sudan. And they migrated all, and they spread out. The 10 tribes spread out. They went all the way to central of the Congo. This is the this is the Central African Republic of the Congo. And by the way, you know, at that time it wasn't called that. It is the um, colonizers that gave them these names. Mm -hmm. Right? And they spread out. This is what they did. When did they start doing that? From 600 BC. 600 BC. So that they were in the land already. At least 700 years before Judah got there. So what did Judah do? Judah, when, when Jerusalem was sacked, did the same thing, right? But Judah, some of Judah went this way. And some of Judah did the same thing. They followed, they followed the, you, the, um, the Nile and then went this way. So, so this part of the Africa, of the West Sub-Sahara, which is the green, which is, you know, this green section where it, where it, because this white section is the desert, pretty much, right? So, so Judah went to this area of Africa, all of this area here, and they built the Negro land and Timbuktu and, and Fort, um, Fort uh, Benjamin and Fort Judah and all the different, uh, and Fort Benin. That was all Judah. This is all West Africa, and this is all Judah. While the inner and more southern and east was northern kingdom. And they were there 700 to 1,000 years before Judah got there. And they both remained there until the transatlantic slave trade 1,000 years later. But with that said, all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. And his son, whose name is Yahawashai. Until next lesson, this has been in defense of the 12 tribes chart. Shalom, shalom, and shalom, everyone.